quiz show where the questions come from you, the public, via a text answering service. I'm Mark Watson and it's a warm welcome to all, whether you're watching on BBC4 or BBC2 or iPlayer or watching through the window of a TV shop or maybe <laughs> this isn't even happening. Uh, I'm not going to be hosting the show on my own. There are actually three hosts. I'd like you to meet the other two. First of all, in charge of graphics and sound, please welcome Alex Horn. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am indeed in charge of graphics and sound, and I'm going to demonstrate both now. Uh, this is how the show works. Uh, these are members of the public. You probably recognise some of them. It's a group of curious members of the public who've also got friends, and the friends have texted their questions to a text answering service. <laughs> yes, and we've teamed up with one of these services, which means we've got access to all sorts of questions. These people are effectively question providers. We don't have to do nearly as much research. We just come along and turn it into a quiz. And the quiz is called, you've been through it, but it's called We Need <laughs> Answers. And uh, what I've done, I've superimposed our faces on there, which is pretty clever. And you, if you watch that hand there, Beep, 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 beep. I mean, that's just, a, that's just a glimpse of what I can get up to tonight. Yes, yes. lots of course, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. We also have a quiz master. He is, as ever, Mr Tim Key. Hello, Tim. Uh, so, Tim, we always like to have a theme yes, for the like show. Yes, we like to have a theme to the show. We love a theme, a good theme. What well, is this show's it's theme? It's nice when the show has a theme. I like a theme myself. So, this show's theme is, of course, music and fauna and smut. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, music and fauna and smut. So, what do, we, what do we think about when we think of music and fauna and, well, of course, different types of deers, <laughs> singing, bracken, maybe, fiddling? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure, really. Yeah, fiddling could come into more than one category there. <laughs> so, whether you like deer or Beethoven or a bit of groping, you'll enjoy this. <laughs> And we have the privilege of two excellent contestants covering the whole range of music, fauna and smut, apart from fauna. Are you ready to meet the contestants? <laughs> yes! Let's meet the contestants! Let's meet the contestants. Our first guest tonight is at the smut end of the equation. She created the erotic review and still writes her sex advice column. She's also worked for Private Eye. She's judged the Booker Prize. Sex, journalism and judgment. It must be Rowan Pelley! Her opponent tonight is the first We Need Answers player to have DJ in his name, and rightly so. He's DJed everywhere from the Isle of Wight to Dubai. He's all over Radio 1, and tonight he's all over our quiz show. Let's have clapping, whooping, and cutting edge cool noises for DJ Niha! So those are contestants. We're pretty much ready to go. The first round is called Burning Issues and Fiddly Questions. Tim, are you ready? I'm gone. Alex? I was. Oh, you're less ready now. Yeah, right. Okay, well, okay, stay there. Let's play We Need Answers. <laughs> Oh, look at the shoes! All right, all right. I just noticed the pink oh, eye shoes. <laughs> all these questions have been um, texted in by members of the public and answered by our text answering service. Right. The aim is to match your answers with the answer given by our text answering service. Are you clear? Yes. OK, so, Rowan, we'll start with you. Ready? Yes. How long would it take to drink Lake Windermere? <laughs> Whenever you go to the Lake District, it's pouring with rain. Yes. So you oh, can't. Yes. So it's always refilling. It'd surely, be a thank surely it's refilling quicker than you can drink. You've, you've correctly identified the fact that it's a thankless task. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, unless you know there's a huge drought and the whole thing dries out, the answer is never because there's probably a water source that water flows into it that refills it and it pours with rain yeah. and you just simply can't do it. No, it goes across. Have you been there? Yes, I have. Okay, yeah. so uh, I've been there. Yeah, be too different. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a drink while I was there. Ah, but it wasn't from from the. But lake. it wasn't several million liters. No. <laughs> oh, is that a clue? Mm, sort of. Ah. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said. <laughs> Three liters of water a day. Yeah. Uh, so um, what was it again? Uh, lake Windermere. Lake Windermere. <laughs> Three hundred thousand years. Well, 
Lake Windermere contains approximately 305 billion litres. Billion? Yeah. Oh. So much water in that. <laughs> at, a recommended, at a recommended two litres a day, it would take one person 417 million years to get through. <laughs> So, so you so were closer. So is my never. My never is... Yeah, your never's pretty close. I'm going to say you're quite right! Oh, there we are. Points to run. <laughs> the distance between no time and 300,000 years is closer than 300,000 years and infinity. No, sure. no, no, but yeah. never, never is about sort of 500 million, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this is for you. Right. Why can't a mind reader read your mind? Please, could you find this particular answer, please? Thanks. <laughs> It's all one big giant scam, uh, mind reading. Is right. Uh, our text answering service says mind reading is impossible because telepathy doesn't exist. So you're right. It's poison in the house. Is that what it's? I don't, That's what it says. Yeah. It does exist. Yeah. Well, yeah. What? I can I can do a bit of mind reading. Go on then. Go on. Nihal, I'll read your mind if you want. Yeah, please. Think of a number. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep thinking of it. Right. This is a clipboard. You may have seen them. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Rowan, can you keep that? Don't look at it yet. OK, now, Nahal, can you uh, just say what number you were thinking of? Seven. Seven. <laughs> Rowan, do you mind reading what I've written there? Just nice and loud, as loud as you can. Look at Tim's hand. Can you, can you show um, your hand? No, the other hand, the other hand. <gasps> Seven! Seven. 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 Me, how, how did you do Alex. that? Alex, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that is weird, isn't it? <laughs> Reality defying mind reading tricks from Alex Horn. <laughs> good. 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 Okay, Rowan, yes. this next question is for you. And it's a um, <laughs> sexy question. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? It is a bit. Don't look at it then. <laughs> Whoa, love. How long is the penis of the Californian banana slug? <laughs> oh, that's sexy. <laughs> oh, what, what would be not offensive to a slug? I don't want to. Oh, you don't. So wanna... I don't want to ridicule them. No, no, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Not do many they... of them watch the show, actually, Rowan. So. Yeah. <laughs> Three centimetres. Three centimetres. No, it goes across. Well, if my natural history is correct, it has the banana slug has nothing to do with the fact that it has anything to do with bananas. It's the fact that it has a penis the size of a banana. <laughs> I would say about six centimetres. I'm going to say it's quite right. Yes. It's ten centimetres. That will do. What is the point in the house? And um, that's that really. I'm nothing really that interesting about the banana slug. Uh, except it chews off the penis of its partner after sexual intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> uh, Neil, mm. is it true, if you rub a grasshopper's back leg a number of times, big if, does it turn into a locust? That's again, we texted in by a member of the public, presumably <laughs> one that's sitting there rubbing, thinking, well, this is taking ages. <laughs> I would say no, but should, purely by rubbing the leg of something, it can't change into something completely different. Grasshoppers and locusts are quite different species. Rubbing the grasshopper's back leg a number of times will not turn it into a locust! Yeah! yeah. And that's the end of the round. <laughs> to the end of that round, Ron Kelly has one point, but out in front with five points. Niha! <laughs> The next round is all about our uh, contestants, uh, so we're going to find out a little bit more about them. Now, Rowan, you were the editor of the Erotic Review, but you still <laughs> write a, a sex column. I, I do, yes. You write a sex co advice column for the Daily Mail. Yes. Is it all things like Romanians keep coming past my house so I can't concentrate? <laughs> 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 um, 
It's considerably more straightforward than that. I should imagine it is. <laughs> well, Rowan, uh, to sort of boost <laughs> custom for your column, we've asked tonight's studio <laughs> audience, and this is a We Need Answers first, um, to give us sexual problems to run past you. We've asked for all of the, uh, all of the comments to be written in the time-honoured agony aunt format, I've got this friend who... dot dot dot. <laughs> um, so this one stood out. Um, you, either of you can help with this. I've got this friend who fantasises about being sexually used by alien tentacles. I, I think I would say it's normal and healthy to fantasise. You'd be lying. Oh, I see. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I think I would say, well, it's a little bit more Baroque and interesting, the alien tentacles, but then octopuses have featured very heavily in sexual fantasies. Uh, uh, I'll just stop you there, have they? <laughs> you haven't read Nancy Friday, have you? I will. I will. Do you believe the Daily Mail have a problem if it was uh, illegal alien? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think this is, even by the standards of this column, this is rather specific worry, Rowan. I've got a friend who can only have sex whilst listening to Enya. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's serious perversion. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That really is. <laughs> That's, I don't think we can help that person. Whoever you are, you're sick. Uh, this is chat up line. I'd love to put it in you. <laughs> the next round. I didn't get it. <laughs> it's been officially ratified as a pilot. Oh, good. Right, thank you. <laughs> anyway, Rowan, uh, we'll continue this later. I've got a friend. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to move on, I think. The next round is called You or Him slash Her. And in this round, all the questions have been sent to our text answering service on the subject of our contestants, Rowan and Nihal. Each player can choose to answer a question about themselves or, for oh. double points, take a question about their opponent. Let's play We Need Answers. <laughs> You are right, Nihal? Yeah, I'm... Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, Nihal, would you like a question about yourself or about Rowan? About Rowan? I'd like Why to find not? out more about you. Why not? Why not? Uh, <laughs> Rowan. Close your yeah. eyes, please. Nihal, what colour are Rowan Pelling's eyes? Ooh. Green. Rowan Pelling has gorgeous brown eyes. Oh, <sighs> which she uses to her advantage. Both men and women find themselves powerless to resist her smouldering gaze. No, there's a green in there. <laughs> very, very slightly they're easily. See? They're, they're, they're brown. See? They're the brown! The brown! They're brown! You see, man! The brown eyes! They're brown. The problem is, you have to match your answer with the answer that we've got here. Um, so, no points, I'm afraid, Nihal. Sorry, mate. Yeah. If I get one wrong yeah. and call you a racist, thus preying on your liberal guilt, will you give me an extra point? I think in that situation <laughs> it would be quite awkward and I'd probably give you several. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, throw the racism card until you have to, because okay, this is the BBC and they've had there. no yeah. Yeah. It's always there. It's always there. Always. We weren't sure whether we should invite him on because it gives him a platform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, do you like one about yourself or about Nihal? I'll, I'll tack one on myself because I'm bound to get that wrong. Not necessarily. Um, when Rowan Pelling was editing Erotic Review, those were the days, mm. Mm. did she insist on having sexy music in the office <laughs> all the time so the journalists were constantly turned on and in the mood of sex? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't insist upon having sexy music. I did insist on quite a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, flirting. Flirting. Flirting, generally. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so there was, there was, there was yeah, a lot of, a lot of sort of... Harmless sitting on knees and things. Pretending to be octopuses. Pretending to be octopuses. <laughs> French mistress, obviously one of my favourite. I've got a maid's outfit. Oh, I used to sometimes hold editorial meetings in a maid's outfit. I don't outfit. think I can do this anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, Rowan, uh, you're... Oh, here we are. Uh, unfortunately, you're wrong. You did, you did play music in the office. Yeah, but not very often. Well, it says you did it. You insisted on having sexy music playing in the office at all times to get no, everyone in the mood. it's not true. Whoever answered uh, that no, answer... Well, you need to match the answering service wherever possible. Okay. Uh, Nihal. Uh, Rowan again. Oh, Rowan again. OK, yeah. uh, Rowan. I know about me. Yeah. Cover your ears, Rowan. Okay. Um, uh, they're, they're kind of fleshy covers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's, it's, it's right! Yes! You got it! Yeah. She has lovely shell pink ears. The end of the round. Rowan Pelling still has one point, but well out in front with nine points. Nihal! <laughs>
Alex, do you have any analysis for us? Mark, no. What I've got, <laughs> I've got a question of my own, and it's about, um, it's about beards. And, uh, <laughs> from the text answering service, it's this question. If you have a beard, does your face always work the other way up? I don't know if you've seen those pictures where the, the face turns up. I think it's a child wondering if a face always works that way up. So I've got a graphic here of my face with my beard. I just thought I'd demonstrate this, really, just so you can see... <laughs> it sort of works. It sort of works. And, uh, and Nihal actually used to have a... used to have a beard. So, do you mind if I try that with your face, Nihal? I'd... Please, it I'd does love make you look. That. I think it generally increases the looks. Let's have a little look. Did a little, did a little, did a little. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it, it does work. It still works with the face. It's uh, quite extraordinary television. Can I have that as my passport photo? You can have it as your passport photo. Thank you, Alex. Well, it's now time for the physical challenge. <laughs> So far, it's been all about the quiz, but we're now going to set our contestants a physical challenge based, as ever, on a particularly interesting text received by the text answering service. So, Alex, can you reveal the text for this yes. show, please? <laughs> there you are, with suspenseful music with that one. Interesting text has been sent in here, controversial text, perhaps. Realistically, how much stuff can I nick just by stuffing stuff down my trousers? So, three uses of stuff in the text there. Uh, well, we could hardly have a more self-explanatory challenge. Basically, we're going to see which of our contestants in a fantasy supermarket scenario can nick the most stuff by stuffing it down their specially issued trousers. And to keep a watchful eye over our hopeful thieves, please welcome security guard Tim. <laughs> We don't condone shoplifting, but it's a question which has been texted to the answering service and we feel duty-bound to address it. We're going to ask our contestants to visit this well-stocked supermarket and relieve it of as many items as possible against the clock. However, the security guard is going to be watching them and they're only allowed to nick things when he's not watching them. A bit like in real life, you can only do it when you're not being watched. Let's play the physical challenge. Your time will start now. So, straight away, Nihal is being watched beadily, which means Rowan uh, immediately starts. But now, suddenly, it's Nihal's chance. <laughs> there he goes, all the way back. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and we've got... Uh... <laughs> you can follow the action on these CCTV cameras here as well. <laughs> And they've changed sides, amazing stuff. Pelling cleverly takes the polish, puts it down the trousers. About 20 seconds of stealing time left, keep going. <laughs> 10 seconds to go, steal it! And that's time up! So, in the nick of time, our contestants have finally been caught by our previously rather <laughs> inattentive security guard. Well done for finally twigging, Tim. <laughs> so, now we're going to find out what they have got away with, or what they nearly got away with, had they not been shopped at the last minute by the security guard. We're going to judge them uh, in terms of the monetary value of the items they nearly managed to steal. So, can you, and I don't often say this, unload your trousers, please? <laughs> First of all, Nihal stole the nappies! We have the chili flavoured tortillas. Tortilla chips! Yeah! A uh... pot noodle like item! Yeah. <laughs> A loaf of bread. bread! Very sensible, very sensible. What else has he got down those slacks? He's managed to take some chicken cream of chicken soup. Tea bags. Tea bags. Plastic cups for Nihal. For the soup. Bleach! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Pelling steals a huge great thing of bleach. <laughs> Jaffa there we are, Jaffa cakes. Jaffa cakes? Yes, everyone's yeah. gone for the Jaffa cakes, of course. Yeah. They're Moorish and you can nick them easily. <laughs> He's got polish! Look at that! Two lots, two lots of polish. Multi surface polish. So you're going to have yep. some clean houses, you thief. Oh, tea bags, very sensible. Well done, Nihal. 
amazing clean. capacity in those uh, Helling slabs. Yeah. Uh, milk! She's like got milk. the milk as well. Not only tea bags, but milk in case someone is picky. All right, there you go. The final, is that the final? Another, another More cream of chicken soup for the how. Just be given the final frisking. <laughs> cream of chicken cream soup. Cream of chicken soup. She's done an astonishing job here. <laughs> More cream of chicken soup. What? Oh, there can't be any more. Uh, how, come, minute, how come she gave me tracksuit bottoms and her the TARDIS? <laughs> <laughs> well, you think I haven't done this before? <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is the BBC, so she hasn't, and it's fine. <laughs> and she's still going here. I've never seen so many things you in someone's trousers. You spent more time looking at me. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Mil more milk. milk! Amazing stuff. Uh, yeah. That's all. Astonishing stuff. And after that bout of kleptomania, Nihal, your items come to a grand total of... It's £20 and 80 pence. £20 and 80 pence. Not bad. <laughs> Rowan's winnings come to... It is astonishing. It's £24 and 36. That's amazing. This wow. means that the winner of the physical challenge and the best thief here is <laughs> Daily Mail columnist Rowan Payne. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> After that startling display of immorality, we now move on to our final round, the quick-fire meltdown round. Now, all the questions in this round are for double points, double points for every question, and the quiz ends when Rowan and Nihal's heads meet on the screen. So, for the final time, let's play We Need Answers. <laughs> Quick fire, Tim. Quick fire. 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 I'm doing it. Be quicker, please, Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Neil. Will my car... <laughs> Will my car pass its MOT if the petrol gauge doesn't work? DJ Nihal. No. Goes across! Yes! Yes, it will! Yes. yes! A petrol gauge isn't checked. Can I drive a car on Pluto? DJ Nihal. No. How would you get it there? Well, quite right. There's no way you get it there. Mm. Well, so it's no. Yeah. So you're right! Yes! yes right. Also, the petrol would freeze, the petrol would freeze. Petrol what would place freeze. did Charlie Chaplin come in the Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest? DJ Nihal. Come on! Second. Ooh, goes across. Third. Yes! yes! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who is the Greek god of love? Adonis. No, not Adonis. DJ Nihal. Eros. It is Eros! Yes, he's done it. I couldn't it's remember. Eros. I couldn't remember. It's all, all. Oh, oh, she couldn't remember. Your publication was named after Eros. I know. <laughs> It's where the word erotic there still. What is the longest man-made thing? DJ Great Wall Nihal. of China. It is the Great yeah. Wall of China! What is the most played song on the radio ever? DJ Nihal. Um, um, uh, Beatles song. Ooh, no. That I'm... doesn't uh, narrow it down quite enough. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a slight clue, Ron. Is it you shade of pale? that love oh, feeling. Mm, is it you? No, nope, too late. <laughs> You're going to kick yourself. So you've lost that loving feeling. Uh, and the Righteous Brothers. Who was the most famous bully in Grange Hill? Come on, quick fire! Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 tuck, 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 no, 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 no. Ooh, Gripper Stepson. It is oh, Gripper yeah. Stepson, yeah. yes! Uh, he was never happy unless he made someone else's life a misery. Henchmen, Danny Reese and Georgie Smith. Do bats in Wales hibernate in winter? Uh, yes. Rowan Pedder. Yes, they do! From November to April! <laughs> And that's the end of the round and the end of the quiz. So, as usual, we will reveal the results in reverse order. Tonight's runner-up with 15 points is Rowan Pelling. And... Rowan, you've given us an awful lot of, um, what can I call it, sexual pleasure. But now <laughs> we're going to have to ask you to take those boots off. So, Rowan, I'd like to ask you, as the Wheelie Dancers runner up, to put those clogs on and leave the stage clumping as loudly and sadly as you can. <coughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Rowan Pelling, your runner up, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's winner, though, with an impressive 25 points, is, of course, Nihal! <laughs> Congratulations, Nihal. You've won. <laughs> you can choose your prize, Nihal. All oh, right. Would you like the Winnie Dancer's plate or the Winnie Dancer's skate? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
wow. Can I, uh, can I just ask out here, who would like me to take the plate home? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going with the skate? Yeah. Absolutely enormous majority, but you could, you could sort of buck the trend if you wanted. Yeah, I'm going with the plate. Obviously. There we are! <laughs> Amazing. A brave man. Nihal goes against the tide of public opinion and chooses the Wheelie Dancer's plate, but he could. Would you like to win an even bigger prize, Nihal? It doesn't involve nudity, does it? No. Right. It, it, well, unless by nudity you mean answering a question. Oh, right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so for the house prize showdown! <laughs> Welcome to the House Prize Step, where I'm here with DJ Nahal, tonight's winner. How are you doing, mate? Oh, I'm really happy now. Ah, oh, well, you'll yeah. be even happier if you win the House Prize, which, yeah. as ever, tonight comes from one of our actual houses. Uh, so, Alex, can we see <laughs> where the prize came from and what it is, please? OK, down it comes. Diddle, diddle, diddle. Oh, well, diddle. It's my house. It's clearly my house. <laughs> Absolutely my house, and there's no doubt about it. It's my... It's my barbecue! Oh! oh barbecue. Well, there it is, Nahal. <laughs> And also, we're going to chuck in some sausages. <laughs> Cheap sausages. Oh, yeah. There we are. So, don't, Nihal... Don't eat... You don't eat sausages? sausages. No, sorry, we were sorry. banking on Nihal not winning. Uh, <laughs> but you must like barbecue still. Can I still take the barbecue? What, or you, is the sausage part No, you don't have to have the sausages. Oh, OK, I'll OK, there we are. So, Nihal <laughs> will win the barbecue, he'll win the sausages, he'll give the sausages to someone from a different uh, faith and ethnicity. Uh, <laughs> I'll take, the, uh, I'll take the sausages. Oh, there you are. So, Nihal, if he wins, he's going to give Tim the sausages. I'll take the sausages. It's not to do with faith, by the way. No, but I had to say faith or ethnicity, just in yeah. case you... Well, it's have... not to do with either. I thought maybe you were Jewish. Oh, oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. So, Nihal will win... <laughs> <laughs> we all wish we were Jewish, Nihal, but... <laughs> Some of us just didn't get lucky. Hello. Hanukkah seems like such a good thing. I know. So, Nihal will win the barbecue and the sausages, which he will then give away if he can answer the house prize question. Tim? So, you've both got something to gain here, because you'll get the sausages here. You <laughs> 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 ready? What were in those two? Ali. Alex. Alex. Can we have some uh, tense music, please? <laughs> enough, that's enough, that's fine. <laughs> Quick as you can. Mm. Is Doc Cotton from EastEnders yeah, oh. Pete Doherty's aunt? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. I would say. Haven't you got pictures of both of them so I can see if there's any uh, resemblance? I'll have a look. I don't think I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just trying my. Um, no, not on my phone either. No, there's oh, nothing. No. Sorry, mate. You're going to have to yeah. answer the question with the time on the tradition of answering the question, oh, I suppose. Okay. Um, I would say no. <laughs> it's right! Yeah! yeah! Oh! He's won the barbecue! Yeah, Harris won the barbecue! He wins the winning answer's play. He is tonight's winner. Also, thanks to our runner, Ron Kelly! You brought the winning answer from Mark Watson, Tim Key and Alex Horn. Good night! Go to the BBC Comedy website to watch more from the We Need Answers boys with the fiendishly addictive celebrity name game, No More Women. Next tonight, stay with us for Charlie Brooker's Newswipe coming up, and here's the man himself to tell you all about it.